This is a story about an orphan named Johnny Tremaine, an apprentice of a silversmith named Mr. Lampum in Boston, Massachusetts. Johnny is the best of the apprentices in the shop and is given the highest responsibilities. As Johnny is casting a piece of silver, his hand gets covered with silver, causing him to pass out. When he recovers, his hand is deformed. Because of Johnny's disfigured hand, Mr. Lampum tells him that he can't continue as an apprentice and must find work elsewhere. He inquires at various businesses and trades, but they all reject him. Johnny ends up at the home of Mr. Light, a rich merchant who Johnny believes to be his relative. Mr. Light doubts it, but Johnny shows him a silver cup that belongs in the family. Mr. Light has Johnny arrested on suspicion of stealing the cup, but the case is dropped as the Sons of Liberty provide Johnny with a lawyer. Johnny goes back to Mr. Light's home to talk, but Mr. Light tries to have him thrown on a ship. Johnny escapes and ends up delivering newspapers to surrounding towns for Mr. Lorne, a local printer. There, he meets Rab, a fellow apprentice. Johnny is asked to invite various men to a secret meeting to discuss the upcoming tea protests in Boston Harbor. The men agree that if no compromise is made between them and England, they will dump the cargo of tea into the harbor as a sign of protest against the taxation without representation. After getting the go-ahead to proceed with the protest, Johnny and several other young boys and men begin dumping the tea from the ships into the harbor. The protest is a success, but a British admiral warns them that someone will have to pay for the rebellious act. Times get tough for the people of Boston as trade ships from London are not allowed to enter the harbor. More and more British troops occupy Boston, making the local people uncomfortable. The economy slows down, and so some families are forced to move away. Johnny becomes employed by a British officer as a writer to pass along messages between towns. It pays well, and he is able to support the Lorne family. Two of Johnny's childhood friends, Scylla and Izana, go on to live with the Lights, where Scylla is mistreated and Izana is spoiled and mocked. An angry mob drives the Light family away from their home, as Mr. Light suffers from an illness. Meanwhile, the townspeople continue to debate whether they will fight the British or try for peace through negotiation, but war looks imminent. As spring arrives, the British forces begin to organize in order to confront the ever-growing American rebel forces in the surrounding towns. British deserters who sympathize with the Americans are also shot. Rab leaves for Lexington to prepare with the other American militia, and Johnny stays in Boston to learn more about when the British will begin their attack. With the firing of the first shots by the British, the war begins. As more battles between the British and Americans ensue, Johnny returns to the lighthouse and sees that Scylla and the family are packing their things. Lavinia, Mr. Light's daughter, tells Johnny about his parents, revealing that Johnny is actually a Light and that she is his aunt. Scylla chooses to stay in America, while Lavinia, Mr. Light, and Izana leave for London. Johnny disguises as a British soldier and searches for Rab. He finds Rab recovering from his wounds, but Rab later dies. In the end, Johnny takes Rab's gun and allows the doctor to fix his hand so that he can join the fight. If this video was helpful, please share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe for more Minute Book Reports and thanks for watching.